software house which means we make things up we write things anybody here ever had a passport photograph taken in a supermarket booth putting your hand up is quite yeah nothing horrible will happen okay brilliant thank you and how many of you have ever treated your kids to a ride in Thomas the Tank Engine we actually wrote the software that runs all those machines across the country there's 30 odd thousand of them and it looks after the accounting, it looks after the functionality and the maintenance, the things where you can send an email if they're ill. It's brilliant. I'm sure this doesn't happen where you work, but that, is this kind of thing familiar to you from somewhere? You're one of a team of eight. You're all busy people and you and your colleagues don't always coincide. You want to get some information across, you email all of your colleagues. Six of them reply with copies to the rest of the group. That's 48 emails. And then people start replying to the replies. Then they start discussing the replies to the replies and copying each other in. And basically, you end up with what can safely be described as a flock of emails running right round your company. Collaboration software blows all that nonsense out of the water. The first thing it does or will do for you, is it kills your flock of emails. It's going to change the way we work, the way we think about work. Think about Facebook and stuff like that, social networking, social media, <coughs> and then add into it security and confidentiality. That's what collaboration software is about. All the work gets done in one place. It's not like this spread of stuff that you've got to scoop up and try and make sense of. The work is done here, everybody puts their bits into it. So it moves quicker, it gets things done. Emails are basically very swift versions of parchment and quill. This is going to make a difference. It's going to be a fun difference because it does make us work so much more efficiently. And this is coming from a bloke who, as I said, knows virtually nothing about computers. But I can see the virtues of this, I can see the value of it. And if you think this is a bit Star Trek, don't worry about it. Because Fujitsu are using a version of this, Nike use a version of it, the YMCA in North America are using a version of it, and the Sabre F1 team use a version of it. It is coming, and it will touch us all. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Do you really want to be the last company or organisation to save time, effort and money, and also in be better at what you do? Someone's going to be the last one. It doesn't have to be you. My topic for the day really is to provide you with a national overview of the recent um, disorder, um, the policing response by Suffolk and also some specific um, information for businesses. You'll all be aware, unless you have the fortune of being abroad uh, on holiday in the other part of uh, August, um, that the recent disorder was sparked off in Tottenham following the shooting of Mark Duggan, the fatal shooting of Mark Duggan. The protest march that followed a couple of days later turned violent, um, resulting in police vehicles, shops um, and various uh, homes uh, being damaged quite extensively. The following night there we saw this disorder spreading to other London boroughs, um, typified by continuation of damage, uh, rioting and arson. The following night, the third night, sounds like a story around Christmas in there, um, this rioting and looting spread to other cities um, around the country. We were obviously alive to the fact in Suffolk that there was the potential uh, for disorder to occur in the towns and cities um, uh, uh, of um, Suffolk. Um, so we put in place a command structure and a strategy to prevent disorder and provide reassurance 
to the public. There were a number of measures that we put in place um, which were called the policing responses to these specific risks. Uh, the most fundamental one of them for, for me was around developing the intelligence picture so we were clear about the potential for disorder. Um, and part of that involved social media uh, around monitoring that. Now, we hadn't been that great at monitoring social media beforehand, but we were able to uh, deploy resources uh, to view that. Uh, and that was really important because what we saw from that um, was that there was lots of rumours, lots of myths going around, and I lost count of the number of times that we were informed that B&Q had been torched and burnt to the ground. The purple shot, I know for our centre, had actually uh, been torched and burnt to the ground at least on five occasions. <laughs> Certainly last time I went around there, it was still standing. So it was, and it was incredible people. There was a newspaper report, was media, and people coming in and saying, I've heard that this has happened in there. So there was a real wealth of belief. So as part of the reassurance, we were able to use Twitter and Facebook and all those things to put out messages saying, no, it hasn't, everything is fine, carry on, the business is normal, uh, we're, we're, all, we're all sorted. But in, in fact, in monitoring that social media, we were able to identify that there were a number of people that were actually potentially trying to organise riots within the town, something that was going on below the surface that hopefully you're all blissfully unaware of. Um, that gave us the opportunity to disrupt any planned uh, activities. So we were using the social media, identifying where people were coming on, knocking on their doors and saying, oi, pack it in. You're not having this, you get close to being arrested. There were occasions, three such occasions, where we felt that they'd overstepped the mark and actually arrested uh, three people for planning riots uh, around Suffolk. Um, and they were dealt with through the criminal justice system. So um, really positive interventions. One such instance, certainly in Ipswich Town Centre, we came across a group of 30 units at 1 o'clock in the morning, quite unusual, um, all wearing um, hoodies, um, face masks on, carrying empty rucksacks in there. And at one stage, they decided they were going to charge a police officer. One, in fact, made the mistake of throwing a beer can and hitting an officer. Was duly arrested and is now serving part of his uh, remainder of eight weeks um, imprisonment. Um, so, a real positive message sent out. The rest of the group was searched. Uh, stop search, identified and dispersed quite quite quickly. Um, and I think for me, that um, enabled us to do some follow-up work with um, the Youth Defending Service, Suffolk County Council, Lipsy Borough Council, and we came with outreach workers. We've been out, visited those people in there, looked at their alternatives for them to getting involved in crime disorder, because we clearly want to prevent this from happening again um, in their situation. So that there's work that's been ongoing in respect to those individuals. We also did some briefings with local community members, representatives, and through the business community network, we were able to send out some crime reduction um, advice. Now, I'd be interested to see how many people here got that advice that was um, sent out through business links. But broadly, and I'm not going to go through them one by one, there were the 10 points really for business. We were saying, these are the measures that you should consider put into place um, to make sure that you're not targeted um, so that we've got things like CCTV, key holders, removing high value goods uh, around the areas. Um, so, so there's some of the key things in the response. So um, hopefully I can be forgiven for thinking that um, you were completely unaware that had, Suffolk had any role whatsoever to play in the recent disorders. But I have to say that had we not had that policing response, we could have easily seen quite some, some damage within the town service. Well, the media is changing and the way we do business is changing, and we as people are changing as well in the way that we like to access and receive information. The media is a great tool to promote your company, enhance your reputation, and increase brand awareness of your services and products, and therefore increasing sales and revenue. But are you using the media to its full potential? We've seen a shift away from traditional media such as newspapers and magazines. Unfortunately, readership has been on the decline for newspapers. And we've seen a shift towards online instead, so websites, social media and apps. So, considering that, is your website giving out the right impression? When people are searching for services now, they're no longer looking in yellow pages or business directory. The likelihood is they're going online. And your website is the first impression. Is it easily accessible to find contact details and services? 
Or are people simply not liking the look of your website and clicking off straight away? Are you using social media? Do you have social media profiles? Are you talking to your target audience, your customers, potential clients? Or are you not sure how to use social media, what to say even? It's difficult to, to know what to constantly be pumping out on social media and which profiles are the correct ones for your company to use, which are most going to be beneficial. But, you know, not everybody has got the budget at the moment to subcontract work out to agencies. So we have um, launched some training courses um, and a new training suite in our offices in Colchester. Green screens are used for making videos to enable you to change the background. We do use the services of professional cameramen to make corporate videos if that's appropriate. Alternatively, we have got the um, ability in-house to create um, vodcasts, which are short snippets of videos or head and shoulders shots for about three minutes of talking straight to camera. We can do that for you, but we can also train you to do that yourself. We've got the ability to train eight delegates in-house. So we've launched a selection of open courses, all of which are delivered by Karen Ainley, our Chief Executive. We've got podcasting, so creating your own audio, editing your audio and putting it on iTunes or your website. The great thing about podcasting is it makes your information on your website accessible to everybody. We've got podcasting, which is creating video, uh, teaching you how to use a video camera, how to interview somebody how to um, edit video and upload it onto YouTube or your website, make that interactive and inviting. And social media, helping you to understand the jungle that is social media, which profiles are most beneficial to, for your company, what you should be talking about, how to create social media profiles. So I encourage you, instead perhaps, to train your in-house staff. Give them the knowledge and skills to be able to update your website, update your social media, create audio and video for your website. Not only will it motivate them, but also it will be saving you money in the long term. Hopefully you've read much about us in the first issue of Ipswich Connected, which you found on your uh, desk this morning. And thank you, Stephen, for the invitation to speak this morning. In case that did go over your head, Johnny Depp's most famous series of films was filmed at Wallaboo Bay, which is just along the coast from this, uh, Harlequin's magnificent five-star resort at Buckingham Bay on the fabulous island of St. Vincent. These luxury freehold high-end properties combined with world-class resort facilities attract the most discerning clients across the globe. And as a result, the independent website TripAdvisor places Buckingham Bay as firmly as the number one on its most popular destination rankings. And with the likes of British Airways, Coney, Carib Tours and so on, all quoting Harlequin as the best thing since that's happened to the Caribbean in over 10 years. Our investment model is very much about um, off-plan, purchasing with two to four year lead times, which of course will ultimately provide substantial capital growth for the investor. But those who need more instant returns, we may have just the answer. Harlequin's hotels and resorts have recently acquired several hotels in Barbados and St. Lucia. They are being refurbished and upgraded to the highest standards that I showed you earlier on. The result of that, the same guaranteed returns uh, on a considerably shorter term scale. And as UK buy to let investors will know, it's all about the numbers. The established luxury market will give you just that and a very high yield net return. Our product is all about sound returns and there are very few investments that are able to achieve a minimum of 10% guaranteed return for up to 10 years. The 100% finance option we have effectively means that with just £1,000 of your own cash, you could own a freehold property in the Caribbean. And alternatively, through SIPs, as we saw earlier, um, a SIP is a self-invested pension, and if you 75% of our current clients are investing and a modern, modest pension of around £35,000 could secure your property with a rest. Don't forget the Caribbean is the world's leading holiday destination 
and the World Bank recommends Barbados and St. Lucia as among the top 30 countries to invest in. You may have saw myself uh, and my wife Dawn last month. Uh, I performed a ridiculous dance and uh, sung uh, at uh, 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, which uh, being an entertainer, I wasn't actually aware there were two 7 o'clock in the day. So uh, it was quite a daunting task. In fact, I'm quite glad that uh, I wouldn't be performing on this stage because I'm not sure whether it would actually take the weight, to be honest with you. So uh, thank you very much for letting us showcase that. And obviously it was just some light-hearted fun to coincide with the, uh, the launch of uh, the Ipswich Connected publication. Uh, Nova Events uh, produces corporate and private entertainment events from planning through to execution. Execution being a bit of a harsh word, but it, I think it gets the point across. Uh, it can be a daunting and time-consuming job putting on events. Uh, a lot of people that take it on for the first time don't understand how much work actually goes into it and uh, the preparation, sourcing the right entertainment, sourcing the right venue, the food, etc. And it can be very, very daunting, as I said, and time-consuming. Nova Events are here to alleviate the pressure of that. Uh, we, uh, we offer a free consultation, free advice, uh, producing quality entertainment. And uh, just to let you know that I've been to many events over the years, uh, performing at some of these events. And uh, I do get the impression that a lot of people that put on events, uh, they are fantastic at finding venues, sourcing good catering companies, etc, etc. But there are not a lot of uh, people that put on events come from an entertainment background. So they can't sympathise or manage how the entertainment should be in the evening. And as hopefully you're all aware, entertainment uh, can be about five or six hours of the evening. So a lot can go wrong in that time. Uh, entertainment, I believe, sometimes at events isn't managed properly. Uh, a lot of people tend to go through agencies. The agencies just send someone. They're meant to perform, but they have no guideline of what they, what they need to do. That's what we're there to, to sort out. Uh, we can offer everything from bands to themed evenings, uh, singers, comedy acts, discos, venue recommendation, outside catering, photographers. I know one just over there, very good indeed. Uh, videographers, I know another one which is fantastic. And uh, a variety of shows and cabaret. Uh, we offer entertainment for weddings, corporate events, private parties, staff parties uh, and uh, some of our clients, to name just a couple of them, Lloyd's TSB, uh, Alco Metals, Carl Zeiss, T-Mobile. And of course, I'm sorry to mention the C word, but we've got Christmas coming up as well. Uh, I know it's the beginning of September, but Christmas is fast approaching and things do get booked out. I'm for Block Solicitors. Somebody dismayed me just now because I've been talking in Ipswich and Suffolk for years. People still are afraid, small businesses, to take on employees. But trust me, as an employment lawyer, you don't need to be. You can take people on, you can see whether they are the best thing for your business, you can see whether your business is better with them or without them. Because for 51 weeks, and I do know there's 52 weeks in a year, for 51 weeks, less the week starts for notice, you can pretty safely fire them. Come into the arms of someone like me to make sure it's really safe and you're avoiding things like discrimination and that sort of stuff which starts from conception in an employment relationship before conception. Actually, it's when the twinkle's in your eye for the advert. So avoid that, but subject to that, you can take a view, three months, six months, nine months. Is your business better with this person or without them? So low risk, get the paperwork in place, at the beginning and at the bitter end if you kill off the relationship. But don't ever, ever do what a lot of employers do, which is that they try to lower the risk first. Do what's best for the business. Decide what is best for the business, even if it happened for 10 years, actually. Decide what's best for the business and then lower the risk as much as possible. And you can lower it a lot. Tribunals actually are quite sensible business people. They're not as scary as people think. Lady Florence River Cruise Restaurant from Orford, 10 minutes away from here, half an hour from Ipswich, uh, cruising all year round, uh, regardless of weather and tides, uh, including Christmas Day. We take 12 passengers on the boat only, so it's quite nice and intimate. We do a morning brunch cruise from 9.30 to 12. Uh, we then do an a la carte lunch from 12 to 3.30. 
and at this time of the year, a sunset cocktail cruise from uh, 4 to 6.30. Uh, you choose your food when you come on board, apart from the brunch. The brunch is a set meal and is a three-course American-style brunch. We start with a glass of fresh orange juice when you arrive at the quay, uh, and that's followed half an hour later by half a fresh grapefruit, followed by ham, eggs, sausage, tomatoes, American hash brown potatoes, tea toast, coffee jam, marmalade, and at around 11 o'clock out on deck, we serve hot American muffins, apple pie, and cream, and more tea and coffee. And that three-course uh, brunch, including the two-and-a-half-hour cruise, is all in at 21.95, so excellent value. Uh, the lunches and dinners are a la carte. You choose from a menu, like going into a restaurant when you come aboard, and uh, it's all prepared freshly for you. And when I say freshly, it is freshly prepared, because we don't have any mains power on board, so there's no microwave. So forget the idea of airline food and boat food, this is fine dining afloat. My name is Matt Horsum, I work for a digital marketing agency called Itinerous, and I've got a few clients in the audience today. Um, I'm not going to go and talk about digital marketing per se, but we have put together a uh, free email marketing seminar. So if anybody does email marketing in their companies or your marketing department do, um, use a different system to what we use, doesn't matter. Um, come and get one of these invites and you can come along, it's free, it's uh, on the 27th of September at Ipswich Town Football Club, um, so come along and uh, we'll help you, help you through your email marketing. My name is Derek Rush from Lee Easy Liberty, I specialise in the uh, supplying of finance for all types of vehicle, whether it be vans, cars or trucks. Now I know we're all out there, we all know that when we got a car last time we got a good deal, trust me. I can get a better one. <laughs> As businesses, we also um, many times have more than one vehicle in the business. And what we don't do is we don't manage our duty of care very well. Did you know you had a duty of care for your vehicles? Did you also know that anybody who comes to work in their own vehicle, you also have a duty of care? What I want to offer everybody here today <coughs> is a free set of software to manage your vehicles. You can put all your vehicles on it, it'll manage all the P11D requirements, P46, it'll ask about driving licenses, and put checks in monthly or annually for renewing driving licenses, MOTs, anything you like. It all goes on there so when the tax man comes around, or the health and safety executive, and there's a man in here who talks about health and safety, uh, comes around, you have an auditable trail for those vehicles and you are required to do it. Did you know if one of your employees comes to work in their own car and you send them down the road for a packet of chips and they have an accident and there's something wrong with the vehicle, that as a director of that business, you are liable. And if they kill somebody, it's corporate manslaughter. And if you don't have a system that's auditable, then you're in trouble.